Hello, Brother Barnabas here. Thanks for joining me today. And we're about to embark on another Devo. And if it's a blessing to you, then uh, like it or share it so others can find it. And we're in John chapter 2, uh, verse 13. So if you want to uh, turn there so you can read along with me, or you can just take my word for it and listen along. Um, John 2, 13. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, Zeal for your house will consume me. Um, let's pause right there. It goes on to tell about the um, the Jews and their reaction to it. But there's so much right here. I think that'll be enough for today, and we'll catch the rest um, next time. And anyway, just a few points. Um, first of all, let's recognize it's Passover. It's a huge religious uh, festival that the Jewish people had. So there are people coming from from all over the place, you know, traveling many miles to get there. So the temple area is packed, and they're celebrating um, the Passover uh, when during the tenth plague of when um, you know when God delivered the Israelites out of Egypt, and um, on the tenth plague, the angel of the Lord went and and killed the oldest son of um, of every household. Uh, but the Jewish people were instructed to put the blood of a sacrificial lamb on the door doorposts, and then the angel of the Lord would pass over and. Um, and the plague would not visit them, and uh, the oldest son wouldn't die. And so they all came and celebrated that Passover. And, of course, we know that's just loaded with theological uh, imagery for uh, when Jesus, the Passover lamb, uh, was sacrificed on the day of preparation. He was sacrificed for the sins of the world, uh, not at this Passover that John's writing about here, obviously, but at, a, at one a couple years later. And um, so anyway, it's Passover. Everybody is there. Everybody's coming. And uh, Jesus went up to Jerusalem uh, with them. And then it says in the temple courts, he found all these people that were selling cattle and sheep and doves. And of course, all of these things were needed um, for the sacrificial uh, for sacri for the sacrificial requirements, you know, Passover. People brought um, animals to be sacrificed on their behalf so that their sins would be forgiven. And um, and there was money changers so that, you know, he changed the various currencies uh, from around the world to uh, to buy the sacrificial animals and things. Um, so all this is very much needed, um, you know, for the temple, uh, you know, to to go along, you know, for the temple business, I want to say, you know, but um, but Jesus was having none of it. You know, he said, he drove them out. And uh, if you think about how he did this, he had a whip of cords and and he must have been very forceful, you know, get out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. And he drove all the uh, all the animals out of there. And um, and I don't know, I, I, sometimes I've just, you know, read this in the past and not really thought about it. Uh, but as I thought about it, getting ready for our time together here this morning, I was thinking, you know, there must have really been an uh, anointing upon Jesus. There must have been angels around him. There must have been just an authority in his voice that um that people did what he asked did what he told them to do you know um i think of uh, you know like a modern day illustration you know like somebody's in a shopping mall or a, a crowded market or someplace where it's all you know costco or walmart or whatever you know and somebody starts turning things over and telling everybody to get out of here you know um he'd just be arrested you know <laughs> <laughs> or the people would subdue him. You know, I'm just surprised that temple authorities, uh, in Jesus' case, you know, I was surprised temple authorities or temple guards or or just the people themselves, would they didn't just uh, overcome him and subdue him. And uh, But but no, there was an authority about Jesus. There was, an, there was a sense that God was in it. Uh, maybe there was an angels. I don't know. It doesn't say all what was going on here. But, but people... Um, um, People scattered. He cleared the temple courts, and he, and it is said that zeal for my house will consume me. And um, and in other places, other accounts, um, it says that my house is to be a house of prayer, and um, and that is really the the heart of the matter here for Jesus. 
is that um, this temple courts are supposed to be set aside uh, for God and for seeking God for prayer. And the people had turned it into a marketplace. And um, in the um, in the in the temple itself, uh, in the innermost, uh, in the Holy of Holies, the most central part, you know, where, where the old priest only went in once a once a year, uh, there was the Holy of Holies. Then around that um, was the inner courts, and then around that was like the uh, court of men, Israelite men. Only Israel, only Israelite men could go in there. And then around that was the court of the Israelite women and then around that court. So you've got like, you know, you know, just um, court after court after court. But the outer courts uh, were supposed to be for the foreigners who came to worship the God of Israel. And uh, God has been very concerned with the not just the people of Israel, but the whole world. The people of Israel were supposed to, to show the glory of God uh, to the rest of the world. And people from around the world um, could come and um and and worship the god of israel and um and that was what the outer courts were for it was called the court of gentiles and um and people from all around the world could come and worship the god of israel and learn about him and pray to him and this court of the gentiles this outer courts were turned into a marketplace and that is why jesus uh became so indignant so angry even sometimes we don't like to think of jesus um being angry but I think a righteous anger, you know, a godly anger over a situation like this where the, the the Gentiles, the foreigners, are not able to come and pray to God because the courts are filled up with markets, you know, with um, tables of and animals. And it's just not fit for for the use uh, which God wanted it for. And um, and so Jesus had a righteous anger, a righteous indignation um, that people were being excluded from God. And that God's temple uh, was not being used for the purpose of, of prayer and representing God to the to the Gentiles, and um, so this was huge in the mind of Jesus, obviously, uh, because uh, apparently he did it twice. There seems to be two accounts: one in John, and then one in the um, in Matthew, uh, Mark, and Luke, where and they seem to be in different time, uh, different chronological order, you know. But but we won't get into all the specifics of that. Uh, but just to say, you know, that this was important for Jesus. Uh, he must have done it twice. He did it with um, uh, with such forcefulness uh, that no one stood against him. He spoke with such authority that people just recognized this must be God. They felt rebuked. They scattered. Um, they quit what they were doing. And this was must have been very important in the mind of John, too, as we think about how he's very... Um, specific in the uh, miracles and the account of the things that Jesus did. We talked about that last time when he, about when Jesus turned the water into wine and what it represented. And this is another act of Jesus um, that I believe is uh, very representative of his ministry and his mission. I mean, he came uh, not just for the Jewish people, but for Gentiles as well. And it was very much in his heart that the um, that all the people of the world could come and pray uh, to the God of Israel, and that uh, the, the the God of Israel, His courts, would not be taken over uh, by 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 sub buyers and sellers and the marketplace, but it would be set apart for God to meet with His people, for people to come and meet with God. So that was huge, and it shows that finally, um, zeal for my house will consume me. Uh, it was uh, written about him. And let's go ahead and pray today. Let's pray that God would give us the wisdom to know when to be uh, bold and um, indignant and even angry about the things that, that anger God. And let's also recognize our responsibility uh, to reach out to those who don't know God. Uh, it's said in uh, Peter that we're a kingdom of priests and a holy nation those of us who um, make up believers in Christ Jesus. And as I talked about earlier, the nation of Israel had that role as well, to be, a, to, be a, to be ministers to the world around them, to represent the God of Israel to the people around them and to glorify his great name to the whole world. And um, let's just go to prayer and ask God to make these things alive um, in our own lives. Lord, we do come to you, Lord, recognizing that... Um, 
that there is a, a part of you, a part of your personality, Lord, that is just uh, uh, forceful, aggressive, um, uh, violent even, as we think about how you went and you turned over the tables and you scattered the animals and you and you insisted that the people leave and quit their selling and changing of money and and all these things, Lord. Lord, zeal um, for the house of God consumed you, Lord. And Lord, we our desire is that zeal for you and for your house would consume us, Lord. Lord, we thank you that um that that we have grace and we have mercy and when we fall short, you forgive us, Lord, because I think of um, sometimes like those buyers and the sellers, you know, they're no different um, than, than me. And Lord, um, forgive us for when we fall short. Forgive us when we don't see what you're doing. Forgive us when we, um, um, when we're out of, out of step with you, Lord, just as, just as those uh, people in the temple were, Lord. But Lord, instead, um, uh, forgive us for those things. And Lord, let a zeal for you consume us, Lord, that when we see something that is wrong, when we see something that is out of line with your will, that we would be bold enough to stand up and um, and say, this is wrong. We need to do things differently. And uh, Lord, just as, just as you did, Lord Jesus, help us to stand strong uh, for righteousness and for God's will in a situation. Oh, God, help us with these things, I pray. Friends, just continue uh, entreating to the Lord, asking Him to help you with the issues that you face today. Until next time, God bless.